Hi, friends. I am filming this September favorites video rather prematurely. It is September 25th, and I do like to wait until the end of the month, but I'm not sure where I'll be at that time. So I wanted to think ahead and film now a couple of topics. This is not going to be your typical favorites video, as not only will I cover favorite products for the month of September, yay, autumn is here. I wanted to quickly touch upon Mother's latest holiday release that has not released yet. Let me find out what the actual date is. A lot of buzz surrounding this release. Many asking me if I wanted to get anything and whatnot, and I've been mulling over this for the last week and a half, going back and forth. Should I buy one or two pieces? Should I buy everything and it is slated to drop in three days september 28th which listen if i did buy anything i would have presented that as a as an october favorite anyway but right now fam i'm going to skip it full disclaimer i am on pat's pr list although i have not received pr from her from her team specifically since the color bomb blush stick release when I was invited to that event I haven't received PR and that was actually per my request I had contacted the team member and they had meant to send me sunlit seduction but I don't know where that package is it disappeared in the ether I have no idea what happened to it never received it from the team. That leads me to believe that I probably will not receive PR for this upcoming holiday collection, which is quite comprehensive and exciting. We have a face palette featuring two blush products, uh, I believe two of the Divine Blush shades, two of them being new, one new in each palette. You have like a, a lighter tone palette and a deeper tone palette. The lighter tone palette, which I was interested in out of the two, houses what looks to be a mint green and a forest green in the metallic finish, super sparkly metallic finish that we saw from her quince last year. This formula, outstanding. I actually love the holiday quince from Pat McGrath Labs, albeit not as luxurious as the black lacquer quad cases that were previously released for holiday. A little more practical, I believe. Slim, easy to pack, and houses metallic shades and the matte shades, right? Nice, smooth, dazzling on the eyes, beautiful brilliance when you apply them there. We have, I think, in this holiday collection, four different quints and one of them I believe was Lunar Nightshade which was the most interesting to me out of the four and I sidetracked myself. The second face palette, the deeper complected one, had two divine blush shades, again one of them being a new shade release and the nine shadows had the more richer berry tones with a what looks to be a violet metallic shade. They're all beautiful and the trios which I I predicted we would have a bronze feature in this holiday collection given that the Divine Bronze collection release back in July, June or July. I knew they were going to be included in some sort of face palette arrangement, right? We have trios this year, one bronze, one divine blush, and one highlighter. And the highlighter formula is shiny and powdery. You need to use a light hand or else I think it would look too powdery and shimmery on the cheekbones. That is my critique on that formula. But overall, oh, and the colorful mascaras, can't forget those. Overall, I think a solid holiday release for the wider consumer space that is interested in Pat McGrath Labs, right? Because I know we were hoping for Astral Quads again. Mm. I have spoken about this in my Golden Age of Pat McGrath video that with supply chain issues, raw material shortages and the like, don't know if we'll ever see that type of release again. But I don't know, even if those issues weren't on the table, would Pat McGrath Labs as a brand go back back into that more luxe space or stay more in the general consumer space, right? The person who doesn't mind the cardboard packaging and will 
not get into the black lacquered brush gold base type of gig. I get that. And the fact that there are so many options now for this holiday release, I think is quite lovely. And my reason for not buying is not because, oh, the brand has changed. Like, I don't like to take that stance. It really has nothing to do with how the brand has changed, how I'm no longer buying from it because it doesn't have the same magic anymore. I think that's a silly take. And not to say if you feel that way, you're not silly. I feel it's silly for me to feel that way because it just has nothing to do with me and my feelings, okay? I decided to skip on this release just purely from a financial standpoint. I have a tighter budget this year, and I'm also trying to break the cycle of buying everything Pat McGrath Labs. I have all her motherships, and I have previously released holiday collections, and they're all sitting in my drawer. And I truly believe the same fate waits for these palettes that I'll be excited for them and I'll do a video with them. They will look gorgeous. I would say, hey, you could buy it now. Maybe wait till later if it possibly goes on sale and they'll end up in my drawer. I haven't used this quint in months, in months. And as much as I love Lunar Nightshade, that looks gorgeous. I'm probably not gonna use it like I haven't used this quint, nor have I used the Star Wars quints for the second collab Star Wars release. I wanna buy Caraway Tupperware, <laughs> which is $245 for the entire set. And with one of those things, I have to make a choice. I have to make a choice. Uh, I can't afford to buy both. Right now, I'm prioritizing certain things over makeup, right? I already bought the Hourglass palette, which I find I probably will have more use out of than the eyeshadow palettes, both the quince and the cheek eye face palette. I could possibly change my mind. And I wanna still experience FOMO. It's not like I'm taking the stance and it's easy, right? I've spoken about this where I'm trying to buy less trying to not rely on shopping for relief, for distraction, and knowing that I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be fine if I choose not to buy these items. I will survive. It is hard though. It's not that like I'm saying this and I'm steeled up and ready to say no and don't care if anyone else buys it and will feel nothing when I see these products. No, I think they look gorgeous. I do want them. I'm deciding to not buy it because again, I know with all the makeup that I have, it's gonna end up collecting dust in my drawer. I don't want that to happen. Maybe down the line, if it goes on sale, I'll decide to buy it then. But right now I feel I need to make a different decision than what I would have last year or the year before, right? To break a habit, you gotta introduce a new one. And this habit is not to partake in the holiday set frenzy that has just begun and it's only the end of September. With that said, I decided to film more content still with Pat McGrath, but featuring her older mothership palettes because they're more exciting to me anyway. And I think it interesting to dive a little deeper into the philosophy or the background of these palettes, the impact they had on the beauty industry, on the consumer, and going into the color stores and the inspiration that angle seems more interesting to me than to film new product reviews. So that's kind of the shift I'm making. For myself, yes, and also to save money. So you will see Pat McGrath content still. It just might not be new Pat McGrath product. So let me know down below what you're gonna do with the holiday collection. I feel it's a great opportunity if you don't have any Pat McGrath labs at all, right? If you don't have anything from the brand, and I think it's quite practical to have blushes and eyeshadows in the same palette. That's cardboard, easy to travel with. Same thing with the face cheek trio and the quince, right? Fantastic opportunity for someone who wanted to try Pat McGrath Labs, but this is, I think, a little more accessible in terms of the price and the color stories, which people could get into a little bit more. 
you know? So let me know if you haven't had any Pat McGrath in your life and you're eyeing some of these pieces from the holiday collection, or if you're like me and have Pat McGrath everything and you're going back and forth about, should I buy or should I not? Mm, let me know down below. But before we continue, a word from our sponsor. That sponsor is me. This segment is brought to you by my online coaching service that I started two years ago in April of 2021. If you're looking for accountability, if you feel what you've been doing has not been working, you need better guidance in regards to your exercise, your nutrition, implementing better habits that you feel your lifestyle will benefit from. And more importantly, if you need that accountability to stay on track, all you need to do is fill out my questionnaire down below. We'll have a call set up, whether it be on Zoom or audio call. We could go over what your expectations are. Maybe I'm the right fit, maybe I'm not, but we don't know until we don't. Again, link is down in the description. And why wait until the new year to start these ambitious goals when you can start with them step by step with someone that can help navigate all the challenges that arise when you're looking to transform your life. Thank you, Alicia, for sponsoring this video. Back to our September favorites. Speaking of the Hourglass palette, definitely a favorite for September. I decided to go the custom palette route, put in palette three in our beloved Barn Owl palette. This was one out of the four choices you can choose this year out of the jellyfish the leopards and the snake. I chose the barn owl because I think this is the most beautiful out of the four, is my opinion, doesn't have to be right, but this was the most appealing visual for me. And I chose palette three, the deepest selection to be put in this compact. And that's what I have on my cheeks now with something else I get into after we talk about the hourglass palette. I've spoken about hourglass powders before extensively on my channel. I have several videos covering these products and this is no exception. Especially this year, I think palette three nailed it. I think the fact that there are five new shades out of the six, where palette one maybe had three new shades, palette two only had one, I felt much better about paying 90 something dollars for five new shades instead of just one new shade and five replicates from what I already have in my collection. The bronze shade, although it might look cool in pan, takes on a, a warmer hue when applied on the hollows of the cheeks. But the star of the show for me in palette three for this holiday release from Hourglass are these coral leaning pinks. They're a lot warmer in nature and I adore just the hue, this peachy, coral hue i think it provides warmth but also is winter or autumn winter appropriate it doesn't look too orangey warm and when paired with the bronzer i think it lovely especially with this topper shimmer shade this is in the shade sunbeam and just look at the beautiful marble effect it has in the pan could be a little tricky to apply, but I think it lovely laurel on the cheeks because it just gives you that glazed donut effect, okay? And this, I feel, leans a little more peachy than copper from last year's palette. Some had felt they couldn't justify buying palette three this year because they felt it was too closely related to palette three from last year. I get it. I feel overall palette three from last year leans more copper orange and this leans more peachy coral, which personally I prefer. But listen, cocktail those suckers to oblivion. I think you would have such beautiful combinations when it comes to copper, peach, and coral. My goodness, the trilogy of life to be put on your cheeks. The strobe light highlight is gold, but I think a suitable tone for my cheekbones. And we only have one the ambient powder, which is used to finish, maybe set depending on your skin tone, a little peachy. And although I said it was fine under my eyes in the original video, when I applied this powder again in my bathroom, it was a little peachy warm under the eyes. So I decided to stick to my Pat McGrath Labs under eye blurring powder in yellow, or just dip into palette two from last year. The, I think it's called Soft Light. That's a more appropriate shade to be placed under my eyes. And I use the Radiant Light shade to buff everything smoothly. So it looks poreless, soft focus radiant and this has been fantastic again i love the compact the shades included the design 
full full favorite full on favorite which leads me to reveal well what do you have in addition to the hourglass palette alicia no other than suku's 20th anniversary collection that released i think a few weeks ago i have this more soft orange blush closer to the center of my face this doesn't have nearly the amount of pigment the hourglass powders have <laughs> i didn't even the possibilities so i thought in a more appropriate shade to place lower on the cheeks here and you have housed with it the eyeshadow shades now these were sent to me by suku and i guess because since i have this i don't feel the need to buy the pat mcgrath face palette this is a much more luxurious compact it's smaller sure this only houses four shadows the pat mcgrath one houses nine we only have one blush pat mcgrath one has two blushes and a little more diverse in terms of the skin tones that can use those shades so i totally get it this has been fine for me and again i spoke about this at length in my suku video i just appreciate the thoughtfulness that goes into suku products and i feel they're so refined and sophisticated and the fact that i have a bunch of suku products another reason why i'm trying to hold back with a lot of these holiday releases especially the blushes my goodness and also their face compact powder which kind of gives the effect of hourglass someone had asked if this was like an hourglass ambient powder lighting moment you could see the pearl a little more here the pearl is a little more apparent in the finish not so much than in the hourglass and i usually like to use this with not a dense brush like sonia's smooth buffer something a less dense longer bristled that has a little more movement so the application is not as concentrated. I feel this type of brush spreads the pearl finish more evenly across the skin, and I adore the finish it leaves behind. This compact came in three colorways. It was, there was like a lavender one and a pink one. Oh, they all look phenomenal, but I opted or rather requested the more gold leaning one, and, and this, is, this is what we got. If you're wondering what's on the face, well, this Suku foundation, this Suku foundation, we had the cream foundation, I think last year, two years ago, and there was another foundation in the jar before that. So they re-released their foundation, now just called the foundation in the frosted glass jar with the gold chrome top extraordinary formula and i failed to mention this in my original suku foundation video that this has more of a i want to say soft matte but it's like a satin soft matte whereas the cream foundation before this one was more satin it had more of like that natural skin finish the formula this time has like clay something in the the texture that i think yields or delivers just a softer effect on the skin and i have 040 today i mixed it with house lab skin tech in 330. 330 gives me a little more color because four or rather 40 on its own right now looks a little off with the rest of my body but it's okay you know especially if i apply the hourglass bronzer or another bronzer in my collection it evens out the complexion it won't have me appear as stark right if i just use 040 by itself and a little goes a long way with this stuff i learn quickly you don't need a lot you need a good brush to spread this around because it is thick it's thick, it got a lot of color, got a lot of body, which I feel a dense brush is best used with this type of texture, one that moves around the skin and one that will buff it into the skin well. So circular dense brushes that you could whip around the face quickly with, I think is ideal with a texture like the Suku foundation. And I've been using it all this month or whenever I received it early September, I believe. And yes, I have been continuing my skin sobering journey. Skin sobering means that I have not used skincare since July 12th of this year. 
So we are on whoa, day 90, which is crazy. You know, I haven't broken yet. Haven't broken yet. How would I remove my makeup today? Well, I usually use water first to just take the powder layer first off. And then I use my grandma's lye soap, unscented. I suds it up real nice. And then I press the suds onto my skin all over and I spend a few seconds there maybe like 30 seconds to a minute just relying on the suction motion between my hands and face to lift the makeup off my skin and I take the lukewarm water and cup it on my skin and let that rinse the suds off that's it maybe I'll apply like a grain sized amount of Vaseline on the drier areas of my face and that has been my makeup removing routine since July. Gotta say, really love it. Really love the fact that it's been ultra simplified. And I do use skincare when it comes to makeup preparation, 100%. I applied moisturizer first before I applied the foundation, which I would recommend anyone do, whether you're still using skincare or not. That just, I think, smooths out the skin because it is going to be a little drier. 100%. What I found though on the side of my face and also on the center, it's like, <laughs> they're not wide heads, but I guess hairs or something like sticks out of my pores. You can't see it because I'm too far away from the lens. Though that, that has been my only observation, which I'm still trying to figure out if my skin is just pushing out junk that's it's been holding on to for all this time i have no idea if you possibly know please let me know down below i love to learn so that has been suku if you're wondering what's on my lip isam was kind enough to send me their lip palette specifically the number 10 nuance lip palette i i could hear you think right now how impractical that would be i get it this is more geared toward makeup artists makeup enthusiasts that love lipstick. I combined these three shades here, use my little spatula, and dropped a little bit of like this uh, mauve shade on the center, and I just adore how this turned out. It's marvelous. The texture feels like a lipstick, like uh, a satin lipstick, and I use their lip brush to apply. Where'd it go? A smaller, stiff lip brush that allows for precision here around the lines of my lips. You can get around the corners smoothly there. And I understand this might not be best to travel with, right? It's a lot of product just for your lips. But you know, if you love to mix and match and not carrying around a bunch of lipstick tubes, right? And you can customize your own shade, that's that is the the net positive right so you gotta have to weigh out the pros and cons for yourself what kind of makeup user are you are you more so a lipstick person than anything else right if you're like i don't wear eyeshadow i barely wear blush but lipstick and i get that you can 100 percent buy something uh that looks like this and break all your lipsticks in the compartments because people do still use lipstick for blush you could custom mix your lipstick and your blush using those creamier textures, whether it's satin, more glossy, more matte, everything in between. You can make your own lip palette, 100%. I haven't started that project, so I am happy that I have a lip palette at my disposal with beautiful shades, by the way. I mean, you can create a plethora of different lips with the more neutral, you got the mauve, you got the more pink, you got the red here, you have the more peachy coral. Peachy coral, there I go again. So it's been fantastic. I haven't been using it much because I put it away and still didn't have it on my desk. But I think now I'm, I'm more inclined for sure to wear this more often and just discover what other, <laughs> just what different lip colors I can come up with. You know what I mean? That's pretty. Especially now that I have all these colors at my disposal in one palette and I don't have to go digging around my lipsticks and figure out what would I wear, wear for this video. So thank you to Isom for sending me this. They sent this to me in August. I just didn't have the opportunity to film with it and to use it extensively. But now 
we have it as a September favorite. And speaking of colors, we got to talk about these nails, man. Oh my gosh, from August to September, the amount of money I spent on nail polish. I bought Hollow Tacos Down to Earth Bundle last month, spoke about that in August. But I also bought ILMP's Cosmic Collection as well as Mooncat's Midnight Rodeo. I got them all here, got them all here. Today I have ILMP on, we have Comet, which is, I, I can't even describe it. It's like a dual chrome shimmy on a midnight base. And here we have moon dust, a silver shimmery type of situation on top of like a more maroon base. Phenomenal. And the other shades in here, let me see. And I also have footage of Dark Matter. Dark Matter is a magnetic uh, dual chrome, a sum chrome, okay? With Shooting Star, which reminded me of Pat McGrath Labs Blitz Violet Orchid from Midnight Sun. I immediately thought of that color. I had those two on. Oh, just outrageously gorgeous. And Mooncat's Midnight Rodeo is so much fun. I put Dark Horse on my toenails, but the most fun combination I did so far is Sand Viper and Fool's Gold. Fool's Gold is a matte flaky gold topper and i've been feeling the matte top coat recently fam maybe it's because of the hollow taco down to earth bundle although full and flaky is not a matte top coat it dries shiny you'll have to apply a separate matte top coat but i love the fact that mooncat included matte top coats without you having to do a separate just standard matte top coat like prickly pear i have prickly pear on my golden age pat mcgrath video on top of hollow tacos modest moss this also would have looked sick on top of not pressed this would have been a killer combination. I might do that later this week. And I also applied Mooncat's Outlaw. Outlaw is like this dirtied charcoal silver metallic. It is so gorgeous. And we have other shades here. I think I also use Midnight Rider. Midnight Rider is so pretty. So many options. I am just over the moon. Okay, with the nail polish collections this year, Autumn just kills it. I'll never forget, I think it was 2020, where ILMP released their Haunted Collection. I think that's what it was called. One of their best, best. And also, one of my clients is, is a nail polish hoarder and lover like myself. She loves ILMP's Harvest Collection, which I am eyeing and... Shame on me for even wanting. After showing you guys all this nail polish I bought and I haven't even used them all, I at least need to use them all first before I even consider buying another collection. <laughs> it's a problem, it's a problem. But I had to share for September favorites because every time I start a manicure, the excitement is unbridled. I just can't wait to choose the colors and the combinations and it all comes out so beautiful. Like look, look at these nails. Oh my gosh. Second to last item on the September favorites video had to talk about <laughs> my mascot glasses. I bought these a few weeks ago. Well, actually, that's that's a lie. I bought these a few months ago. It was only up to a few weeks ago that I got the lenses put in in my new prescription. My eyes got better family. They got better. So it's funny while during the examination, the doctor was switching through different lenses and I was like whoa that's really sharp and he's like well this is what you're wearing now I'm like Need me? and I've been wearing my glasses well more specifically I've been wearing my Zulus these still have the old uh prescription all summer and I was afraid that Without contacts, I wouldn't be able to exercise comfortably, jog or run outside comfortably. But you know what? I've been fine because the Zulus have the nose pads. So they stay on my nose pretty comfortably. I do wear overhead headphones, the Sonys with the cushioned 
ear uh, buds, which makes it easier for the arms of the glasses to stay put. And again, because these are perched a little higher, they just feel a little more secure. So I've been wearing these all summer long. And when I saw the Bjorns with the acetate frame in like this cloudy silver, I just, I just had to get these. Now I was weary because these don't have the nose pads. Now I was unsure if these would be suitable for the warmer weather because you saw that the Zulus have the metal frame, the Bjorns have the acetate frame, and these would have a higher tendency to slide. But the mascot crew, they hold it down. They're, they're eyeglass specialists. That's why they work there. So he managed to shape the arms in a way that wrap around my head comfortably so my glasses could stay put. And I've been training comfortably with these, running with these. Again, over the head headphones help in keeping these more secure. I eventually do want to change the lenses on my Zulus, but I just didn't want to buy contacts because I mean, it, it's going to take out of my food budget. So I decided to welcome this small inconvenience of wearing glasses during training and I got used to it. I didn't mind. I thought eventually I would just get sick of wearing glasses all day, every day for everything that I do would cave and buy the contacts. But I discovered that I acclimated and don't mind wearing glasses even during training if I have to perform an exercise or what have you and I just have to take them off I make sure I place them in a safe place so they don't get crushed by a dumbbell do the exercise and put them back on I got no issues with that and I just love this style I don't know what it is about this top frame style that is one of my favorites that's why I love my Zulus as well but these have now a too strong of a prescription where my eyes are just working way, they're, they're working overtime, you know what I'm saying? So I've just been wearing my Bjorns and eventually I'll get the Zulu lenses replaced, but I had to mention these as a favorite simply because of the comfort and the mascot team being exceptional. Like every time I roll up in there and even before I started wearing my Bjorns, they would replace the nose pads they will clean the lenses for me they will tighten up the screws and I know a lot of eyeglass places do this because naturally that's what you're paying for you're paying oh. Oh my God, you're paying for the assurance, reliability, consistency, right? But I do prefer the mascot designs over like Warby Parker or other glass brands out there. I think they have a little bit more of an edge. They're a little bit more unique in my eyes glasses, but that's just me, right? I went there first, I think initially, and I just haven't looked back. And also I do love their clip-ons, which again, other glass brands have the clip-ons over regular eyeglasses. You see what I'm saying? Look how cool I look. Let's wrap everything up. I think I covered everything that was important as a favorite in September, in addition to several makeup buying thoughts. I wanted to update you on my salt deodorant situation. So I don't remember when I stopped using regular deodorant. I, I went aluminum free because I was experiencing eczema here around my armpit area. It was getting uncomfortable. It was itching a lot. I feared also that due to me introducing caffeine back into my life that it emerged again. And something else about skin sobering, in addition to not applying skincare on my face, I have not also applied body care. I have not used creams, lotions, or oils. I basically just wash with soap on my armpits, feet, and other important areas. Don't apply anything on top, and my eczema has vastly improved. I can't begin to tell you the, I, I don't know if I'll be able to find footage of where I showed my armpit area at the time where it had eczema. This whole part had red patches. It was crazy. This side as well, gone. They're gone. And as I was saying before, at the time when figuring out what products were triggering my eczema, aluminum deodorant or any antiperspirant is going to be drying to the skin. So I thought it would have been better overall for me to switch to a non 
uh, antiperspirant and just use something that would combat odor. I didn't try Native and I didn't try Loom. I did try these other whatevers that had the baking soda and whatnot. I did, yes, it was primarily pure. And then there was another one with no baking soda, mainly salt, but it was too emollient and just made me sweat even more. So then I went to the salt crystal, okay? But one of you had mentioned, and I should have mentioned this as well, maybe I was just trying to embrace the fact that it's okay if this is difficult to use, but you know what is not okay. If you're watching this with kids, my apologies for the potty mouth moment. This stick is a pain in the ass to use because you have to screw it up. It's so delicate and you have to wet the tip. You might get water inside and the screw up mechanism gets stuck. If you drop this sucker, it will crack. If you don't wet it enough, it could scratch the skin. There were just too many barriers, too many barriers. So in that same comment, they mentioned that they used the spray. So I did buy the same brand spray, the Crystal brand, the unscented version, and this was great. This had a fine spritz, right? It was much easier to apply, loved it. What I didn't love, however, I was starting to smell. I was starting to smell and I made sure I followed all the steps. It was recommended that you apply your salt whatever after the shower, did that. Applied it before I went to the gym, did that. Applied it even during workouts because I lifted these arms and I was like, oh no, the onion set is a meeting. So I was like, wait a minute, this, I'm doing something, I'm doing something wrong or I have to choose something else because this ain't working. So I decided to get this, the popular Thai crystal deodorant mist. I bought two of these because from Amazon, they sold them as a duo. So I got this in the bathroom and the other one in the backpack. That's where it stays because I cannot leave the house without this. This might not have a fine of a spray as the crystal. It's still fine. You just gotta, it's a harder mm, to press. This works. For me, this knockout to smell like whoa in a way the crystal did not. I don't know if the Thai version uses a bigger uh, crystal particle in the mist formula that their salt is vastly more superior to the, I don't know. I don't know the biochemistry or the differences between the two. This works worlds better for me in terms of just everything. The, I went to the gym today and I sweated, I sweated, but I didn't smell. I didn't smell like onions. And even if I started to, I just sprayed this, ch -ch -ch -ch, gone, it's gone. I still haven't done the bentonite clay and apple cider vinegar cocktail, the armpit mask. It is said to reset. I don't know what that means. It's like an armpit mask for odor right? So you can do that every few weeks or once a month. I don't know the frequency. I have to double check on that and continue using your salt deodorant. But I don't know, man, this is fantastic. And I like the fact that it's a spray because since it's only salt, I don't mind it getting on other portions of my body, right? It's not like I'm applying antiperspirant to like my neck because the spray is going to hit other regions of your body naturally, and it's not going to ruin your clothes, which is something else to consider that someone had brought up, I think important. If you have delicate fabrics or vintage clothes that need to be taken care of in a way that's not going to ruin the fiber, you have to use a gentle detergent or not even like just a soap and the ingredients found in antiperspirants and aluminum and all that stuff can ruin those fabric. Can they sustain them and whatnot? So just to have this, it lifts a weight off me. <laughs> It lifts a weight off me where I don't have to worry about me smelling my eczema, my clothes getting ruined, and ease of use. There you go. Ease of use number two. You have five points. So this is fantastic. I don't know if you are also on a natural deodorant journey like myself. You've tried several. You couldn't find the right match for you. The Thai stuff works. I love the spray. The spray is just light years easier to use than the stick. The Thai deodorant brand does have the salt stick, but I'm I'm never going back to, I'm never going, Mm -mm. I'm never going back to that soul stick. Whatever brand it comes through, I'm not, I'm not doing it. 
I can't go back. I cannot go back. When you try the spray and it works, you're not gonna go back either. I guarantee it. So those are my September favorites. It was a pretty good month. I didn't go crazy buying all the makeup. I also skipped on ABH's Fall Romance. I filmed a video using my VZ Art shadows and other Natasha Denona shadows, recreating similar looks that I saw on Patty Alonzo's video to just, again, keep me from buying something I know that I already have in my collection. Yes, not in a uh, one palette, but I could make happen in terms of color story. I'm gonna do the same thing with the Pat McGrath Labs holiday collection. And I think the next Pat McGrath Labs video I want to film is featuring and covering bronze seduction. There were great points made, again, in my a uh, holy trinity video for pat mcgrath labs where bronze seduction is thought of to be iconic for the brand so that might be coming up next i also want to film iconic face palettes right and go into when was the first face palette release when did that happen and what waves that caused and face palettes that release thereafter what i have in my collection and what i feel is iconic to the industry so i would love to know what your ideas are down below definitely include those points because they're helpful to me in terms of creating more videos i'll see you down in those comments fam and until then that is a wrap thank you all so much for watching i hope this video helped and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel and until then i will see you on here again with another review tutorial iconic video extravaganza or of course another pat mcgrath video going into her motherships take care and i will see you again soon